For more, let's speak now with Jamal Abdi, president of the National Iranian American Council, who joins us from Washington. And Jamal, there is some concern here in Israel. Your organization put out a statement saying this is one of the best decisions the Trump administration has made in getting rid of John Bolton. Why is that? It's the potentially the best decision he's ever made if he can uh, avoid a war with Iran and uh, get back uh, to the table so that the nuclear issue and other uh, challenges that the United States faces in the region uh, can actually be addressed diplomatically. And I think John Bolton was a roadblock to that. Uh, I think John Bolton uh, was not really in line with what uh, President Donald Trump's instincts are on foreign policy, uh, and that he was there as an attack dog who um, uh, I think Trump believed got off of his leash and needed to be let go. Your organization, Jamal, also said, uh, and I'm quoting, as with Bolton's time in office, the time has come to dispense with the maximum pressure campaign and halt necessary sanctions to enable talks to move forward. Why should the U.S. lift those sanctions before talks even begin? It's important that, um, uh, that the United States return to compliance with the nuclear deal. And I think that that is a fair place that the international community agrees uh, the U.S. needs to be uh, uh, in order for diplomacy to continue on to bigger issues with Iran. Now, in order for talks to begin, I think that uh, politically on the Iranian side, they're going to need to be able to show that they were not coerced to the table. Even in instances where some argue that pressure worked uh, and Iran was forced to the table, which is actually a framing that I disagree with. I think that it was always a matter of uh, concessions. But even in those cases, like the nuclear deal, like previous instances, Iran has never come to the table if there's a perception that it was forced to the table. It has always been in, in exchange for additional concessions. So I think that if there is really a desire to talk to the Iranians. There's going to have to be more than just this important symbolic move, but actually a move that demonstrates that, yes, uh, there is a light at the end of the tunnel. Right. This isn't a trap or a photo op, but actually the beginning of something uh, more substantive than that. Well, Jamal, there you're talking about negotiations. What about a meeting between President Trump and President Hassan Rouhani uh, later this month at the General Assembly in New York? Do you think Rouhani will take him up on that even while sanctions stand? I, I don't think that it's in the cards. I think it's more likely today than it was yesterday, given uh, Bolton's firing. Um, but on the Iranian side, you know, Rouhani and those who supported the nuclear negotiations have been really badly burned politically. They do not, they do not have a lot of capital inside of Iran, even from their uh, biggest supporters, who uh, feel that the conservatives and the hardliners in Iran actually were right, right when they said you know, you should not go to the negotiating table because you can't trust the United States. So I think that they're going to need to see something from Trump first in order to be convinced to, to, to have that meeting. Uh, Jamal, the argument against that is that Iran's actions and rhetoric continues to be disturbing. Here's their ambassador to the International Atomic Energy Agency responding to that U.N. body's latest report exposing secret Iranian nuclear activity. We are witnessing a U.S.-Israeli plot with the support of their affiliated media. Former National Security Advisor John Bolton's remark, wishing to set an agenda for the visit of the Acting Director General on the night that he was on his way to Tehran, along with the media campaign done by two news agencies, as well as the show played by the Israeli Prime Minister, all in all indicate that a joint project is underway. Jamal, the IAEA is a U.N. body, and here we have Iran trying to discredit its most recent reports by saying it's an uh, Israeli-U.S. plot, which uh, this is the argument made by opponents is even if you go, would go into negotiations, this regime simply cannot be trusted. Well, I, I don't think that anybody should be trusted. It's about getting, a, getting an agreement and uh, having accountability measures. And... The reason that the IAEA is in Iran in the first place is because uh, Iran is signatory to the nuclear deal. 
it's the United States that's in violation. Um, so, so the trust argument doesn't really hold water if you if you look at it that way. Uh, the reason the IEA is in Iran is because. Uh, Iran is signatory to the Non-Proliferation Treaty, uh, a treaty to which Israel is not uh, signatory. So I think that uh, it's, a, it's a relative term about who's trustworthy and who's not. But, but Jamal, but what's most Israel, important that's, is that we can actually have the inspectors on the ground. I, I just want to pick up on that comment, because that's the point. It, Iran signed the IAEA Treaty and then violated it. Uh, Israel was not a signatory, so it didn't have to abide by the IAEA. Well, so with Israel, we're relying on trust. With uh, with Iran, we have the mechanisms to actually enforce these agreements, and and we have, you know, I mean, the the sanctions that were in place against Iran uh, for decades, which are now in place again under Trump, these nuclear sanctions, uh, they don't get us a lot. They might impose some pain, but we don't really have anything to show for it. Having inspectors on the ground, having Iran bound to these agreements that are enforceable by the international community, that's something you can take to the bank, and I think that that's uh, something that uh, uh, Trump recognizes that Bolton didn't recognize uh, and why we are here today at this potential inflection point where, where the, the administration hopefully pivots. All right. Well, certainly it does seem that President Trump is perhaps shifting his policy on Iran, perhaps more in, into kind of direction that you are advocating there. We'll have to see how that develops in the coming months. Jamal Abdi of the National Iranian American Council, thank you for joining us on The Rundown.